Good morning. Today I'm joined by Herbert School Professor Russell Chun, who later today is presenting his summer research grant lecture for the Center for Race, Culture, and Social Justice. Good morning, Professor Chun, and welcome to the morning wake-up call. Hi, thank you for having me. So could you tell us this morning, how did you conduct your research on generative AI, and what did you examine? You know, I looked at, um, I did a content analysis, basically, of uh, AI art, um, and I use a public Facebook group called um, AI Art Universe, and it's a really active group, and it has, you know, thousands and thousands of posts and so I just took a selection of those images and I analyzed that to see kind of, you know, what kind of categories and what sort of images were coming up. And before we dive deeper into generative AI, could you please give us some context of the title of the, the event? Sure. So I'm calling my talk Pygmalion and Waifu, Exploring the Racial and Gendered Practice of Generative AI Image Making. Because, um, uh, you know, Pygmalion is a the name of a, it's, it's from an ancient Greek myth, and Pygmalion is, was an artist, was a sculptor of consummate skill. You know, he was like an incredible artist. And what he did was he sculpted a statue of a beautiful woman, and he fell in, lo he fell in love with it. Um, and then Aphrodite, the goddess Aphrodite, came and turned the woman, transformed the statue into a, a real woman, fulfilling his desires. So, you know, I thought there were a lot of themes in that story that fit my research. You know, it's about creation, about creativity, about being a creator and what it is to be the object of, you know, to be the subject of, of creation. And so generative AI also, you know, it gives us Pygmalion skill. Generative AI are a set of tools that anyone can use to create realistic, um, realistic images indistinguishable from reality um and so that's that's why i called it pygmalion and waifu refers to it's a japanese word that means wife and you know people use waifu to, to describe uh japanese um, animation characters or japanese cartoon characters that are objects of desire so, you know, both of them are about these, these um, you know, fictional creations that you're in love with. And so that's, that's kind of what my, my talk is about and what my research is about. And what from your research could you say, Professor, are some of the possibilities and even pitfalls of generative AI when it comes to communication, especially to the images you're just talking about? Um, well, I mean, one of the pitfalls that um, I want my students to know about, you know, and what I'm interested in researching is the biases that are coming out of these tools. Um, you know, what I found in my research is that the AI images that people are creating really reflect the, the cultural stereotypes, the, the popular stereotypes that are out there already. Um, and so if we, we rely on these AI tools for our visual communication, um, you know, we just don't want to start um, reinforcing those norms. We need to be a little bit more deliberate about, you know, what we're creating and what we're choosing. To the AI novice, maybe someone who's heard of or maybe even used just chat GBT, why mm -hmm. should they attend your lecture and what do you hope that they will take away from it? Well, yeah, for, for a novice, I think, you know, I would love for them to, I guess, get interested in the technology um not to be and i think i guess i want them to be thoughtful about what it is um what its potential is and i think you know we're all in this pretty much together it's so new that uh we can't be we can't have like um i guess a knee-jerk reaction against it or even in fully embracing it and um so i think what i want somebody to to come away with when they hear my lecture is, you know, what the technology is about and, and, you know, what we should be thinking about in terms of its impact um, for visual communication and, and our, you know, representations of that we see in, in popular culture. In this early exploratory time for AI, 
Should our students be seeing AI as something to be excited about or something to be more of a cause for concern? It, it is exciting, but it's also anxiety-ridden. I think it is a cause for concern um, because I think you know there's still a lot of ethical and legal issues that still have to have to be worked out. Absolutely. It's going to be fascinating to see where those opportunities go in the future. Professor, lastly, could you share with our listeners when and where they can hear your lecture today? So I'll be talking from one o'clock at the um, Cutart Cultural Theater in Axon Library on the first floor. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for spending your part of your morning with us, Professor Chun. I hope you come back soon and provide us with more insight as AI continues to change our world. Sure. Thank you for having me.